Welcome to FOSS North, the virtual edition. We would like to thank all our sponsors and partners in this difficult situation. Our gold sponsors, Luxoft and Ansible by Red Hat. Our silver sponsors, ITRS Group and Make It Right. Our base sponsors, our partner projects, the open source community and the region of Gothenburg. And a huge thanks to our awesome community. This would not have been possible without you. Hello uh, and welcome. Uh, my name is Jacob Borgrans and I'm going to talk about FOSS, virtual and augmented reality, uh, with a focus on Monado and OpenXR. Uh, as I said, uh, my name is Jacob Bonnerkrantz. Uh, this is all my contact information. Uh, it's um, I'm gonna you, you, those are links, and you can uh, click on them uh, when you download the slides. Uh, what I'm gonna talk about today is yeah, basically a quick introduction to what AR and VR is. Uh, a bit about OpenXR. Um, Monado, uh, giving a status update on Monado, and then doing some demos and wrapping the whole thing up. Uh, what is uh, augmented reality? Uh, you know, AR basically. Um, uh, I have the very simple uh, definition of the word augment. Uh, you know, is to uh, build upon and make greater. Um, uh, so, what is that in concrete examples? Um, uh, say, uh, you know, the app uh, Pokemon Go is actually an AR application where you can. Uh, you know, overlay the Pokemons on top of the real world. Uh, which is probably the example that most people have actually come into contact with. Um, uh, but it could also be used in like work. Uh, so this is a Daiquiri headset uh, where the user sees, um, you know, the little floaty window uh, and is in, in a uh, conversation with a operator on the side. Um, the, per the operator can actually see what the person is seeing through the cameras of the headset, uh, and it can actually draw on the real world. So, you know, you see this little red circle, there's actually something that the operator has drawn on the real world, and it's sort of a, it stays there in the real world. Just like I'm using the pointer, even though it's a virtual pointer, you know, like to highlight that, um, you can highlight things in the real world. So for instance, in, in you know, you can see this is a computer rack, um, you can highlight there, pull out this uh, hard disk, uh, or you know, press this button, or don't press this button. No, no, you know, cross, cross. <laughs> uh, that will you know turn, either turn the whole computer off or like, don't uh, you know, don't uh, push this button on this this control panel that you don't know anything about, but that I know a lot about. Um, so you can sort of uh, uplift people's knowledge of um, uh, about technical things. Uh, and then what is virtual reality? Uh, and I really like the quote uh, that I originally thought was actually uh, Adam Savage's own quote, but it's actually from Dungeon Master, uh, a whole little movie <laughs> way, way ago. Um, so, you know, I react to reality and substitute my own where it's essentially substituting uh, your entire reality. So what do you really think about then is, you know, games uh, is a classical example. Um, where you know you know VR games and things like that, uh, but if you think about it, like in the sense when I showed uh, uh, AR uh, in Pokemon Go, um, regular old games are also actually virtual reality. If you follow the sort of a textbook um, uh, doc, um, how do I call it? Textbook definition of it. Uh, so um, what do you get when you? Combine the two, uh, you get a AR and VR. <laughs> uh, uh, so we say XR uh, is when we mean either AR uh, augmented or, or virtual reality uh, and not extended uh, reality. Um, open XR. Um, to start with Open XR, I'm going to talk about how. Do we actually do XR like on a high level? Um, 
uh, you can see that you have your program and you sort of have a platform that you run the program on and the hardware. Um, uh, and between the program and the platform, you have an API. Uh, and this API you know, would be good if it was portable so you can run on different platforms and different hardware. Um, but you know, as you might have uh, remembered in the past, if you know anything, uh, everybody has their own API um, and you know different hardware, uh, and some application only supported some uh, APIs or that. So you can see that's clearly not a good situation. Uh, whereas some um, a whole bunch of companies, uh, Valve, Oculus, Epic, uh, Unity all got together uh, and started a new uh, API that will be common for all of these platforms. And this API was OpenXR. So <laughs> what's cool about the thing? And it's just like uh, OpenGL and Vulkan. Um, so it's made by Kronos, uh, it's out now. Um, and one of the things that I think is the most important um, best things with this is that it's action based. So you give more information to the runtime of what's actually you want to do with your actions. So you don't hardcore things to certain input devices. So you become even portable over input devices. And of course, uh, there are a fast implementation with. Uh, um, for OpenXR, uh, because now we're not tied to a certain API or we're burdened by it. Um, so you know, we're, we're kind of welcome there. Uh, and to deep dive a little bit on actions um, and the type of the controller that you are using is not in focus. It's more the type of the action. And, and as I said, alluded to, you give more context from the program to the runtime. Uh, and then we can decide what uh, a button do to a certain action or not e maybe not even a button, but certain in types of input. So as I mentioned before, I'm going to talk about Monado as well. It is, and again, like looking back, at how do we do XR? Uh, yeah, <laughs> and where uh, Monado fits in, it's you know it's a platform uh, that sits between the program, uh, exposes the OpenXR API, and talks to the hardware. A sort of a more detailed look on it. You can see there's a sort of a, a platform code chunk of code which takes care of deciding what this platform should be or like what what the hardware platform you'd want us to talk to and the operating systems. And we have drivers for various uh, hardware. Um, and we also have a compositor. And this is not to be confused with a uh, Voiland compositor or X11 compositor, uh, even though they are basically doing at some level, the same thing, which is compositing different layers on top of each other windows. Um, but that picture is more complex. Uh, you know, we have a whole bunch of other parts that sit there, both outside of uh, our, of Monado, but also of, uh, you know, internally. So the you know, various uh, pieces of code talk to each other. Um, there's a whole bunch of auxiliary code on the side, uh, things like that. So uh, another way to look at this uh, in, is this way. Uh, you can see you have your program on top and the OpenXR state tracker, uh, which is what talks to, um, which the program talks to. Uh, and then talks to all of the internal interfaces uh, that are extracted away sort of things. So part of the design goal is to push complex things or complex state tracking things that we, that you as a driver developer doesn't really want to, you know, have to deal with into the state tracker. Uh, and it takes care of, um, say, 
at some point in the future, you, we, uh, we would change the API, OpenXR API, or add new functionality, and we have to support the older way of doing new things, uh, doing things. Um, OpenXR, the, the state tracker would then also take care of implementing that functionality or that um, legacy functionality for us. So the drivers can use only the new way and don't have to care about the old way. Uh, and um, you can see you can sort of stack these th things on top of each other. And so we're oh, right now uh, working on an IPC layer so we can move the compositor and all of the drivers out of process. Uh, so we can uh, and then have a, run these out of the process of the actual application and you can have, you know, you can jump between different programs, uh, like our programs. Um, and if you can see here, there's a couple of things that starts with XRT here next to the arrows between the different boxes. So you have XRT Prober and XRT Device and XRT FD Compositor. Um, and I'm going to talk about them now because uh, they are part of what we call the XRT interfaces. So that's uh, our the internal um, interfaces in Monado. Um, they sit between the different components. Uh, some of the Accelerate code has their own interfaces, which are not XRT interfaces, uh, but they are, yeah, explore, explore that base. It's purely C um, and it's not stable because what our understanding if so the interfaces are dis, uh, are made to be what the hardware or what the functionality we require are currently um, and our understanding of that is going to be wrong in some way uh, you know either we just thought wrongly uh, of what the current situation is or we didn't foresee how the hardware is going to change in the future so we don't want this to be stable uh, because then we know we have to buy, write legacy code on both sides of the interface. Um, instead, we want to push that up into the state tracker. Uh, so we don't want to change, we want to be able to make sure that the API is um, uh, not stable and flexible so we can change it. Um, and since we don't have to make it stable, we can also make it, um, easier to use because we know we don't have to put in certain flexibility into it. We can sort of uh, make it very straightforward um, and fixed, which makes it easier to implement it on and use it on both sides. So the XRT device is basically a device. Uh, it could be a, a controller. Uh, this is a move controller uh, it could be a uh, HMD when you know the thing that you put on your head um, it's built around not an inheritance structure so instead it has uh, these optional structs which become sort of an aspect so um, say you have a device with a, a an HMD device uh, so you have your base HMD device and then you want to put a camera on this HMD. So then you, you know, extend um, that HMD and you have an HMD with camera class. So if you do this with the regular uh, inherent structure, uh, but what if you have a controller with the camera on, uh, you know, do we, that's not an HMD. Uh, do we, you know, have a camera or controller, you know, a controller with camera class there so instead, it would be better to just have this optional stock that we can hang on to a thing, to a device, um, uh, and make it so that any device could sort of implement any ex uh, aspects. Uh, when it comes to functions that are exposed on the struct or the object, uh, we have input sync, um, output settings, so you can activate the rumble features on the controllers. Um, and we also can call into and get the view and positional uh, positions. And they are, um, well, see, they are functions and not 
um, feel the read from it because we need to be able to give in a timestamp that the application wants to uh, application wants to use because um, they want to do predictions. So they're basically asking for a timestamp in the future. Um, so then we can do prediction inside of the device driver. And there's also um, uh, a whole bunch of immutable information from it. So which type of outputs um, we don't expect uh, controllers to, you know, be able to add buttons or remove buttons there, you know, they are fixed. And also which tracking system origin um, they, are, they are in. Um, uh, and then for uh, the for the HMDs, there's screen position and all distortion information as well. For the compositor, um, I'm gonna skip move ahead a little bit here. Um, there's uh, this this is using a base class, you know, a um, inherent instruction instead uh, because that was more fit, fitting. Um, the real compositor is actually just a file descriptor, comp file descriptor based one, whereas we have uh, different compositors and subclasses for OpenGL and Vulkan. So those are the two APIs that we support, rendering APIs that we support in Monado. Uh, and those are just wrappers around the compositor. Um, the prober, which is sort of well, the thing that was called the platform uh, part of the code, um, holds a lot of the policy and how to set up um, all of the entire, how it's called, VR system uh, that you want to use. Uh, so this is just mostly a, a whole bunch of miscellaneous code that we need to throw together and that needs to be able to reason about the whole system. Uh, it's used mostly by the OpenXR state tracker and just says, hey, uh, the OpenXR state tracker, hey, I want to know what type of system, you know, what type of devices are here, or uh, just give me a system that I can use. Um, but it also has a lot of the plat abstractions for the platform or well, operating systems and things like that. So um, abstracting away um, how to enumerate USB buses uh, for well, you know the dis display the device drivers, uh, and this is probably a, a part of the interface that needs a bit of refactoring, and we probably should split it up in two. And again, as you can see, other function is just you know, listing devices, selecting the devices, um, handling video uh, devices, and you know, a bunch of miscellaneous stuff. Uh, so the status of Monado, uh, we we have mostly complete uh, OpenXR support. Um, there's some missing functionality in the compositor uh, that we need to add. Uh, the compositor is currently in process, uh, but it supports mesh shading and all those fancy features. Uh, we have a nice, fairly nice video processing framework. Uh, I'm not sure how long this will survive and we should moving on to anything else. Uh, we can track the PS move controller uh, and we also have a really nifty uh, debug UI that I will demo further on. Uh, when it comes to hardware support, uh, we have a whole bunch of them. Um, the most uh, noticeable one I think is like uh, that we have pushed uh, done a fairly lot of purchases for the PlayStation VR and PlayStation Move. Uh, we also have a North Star support, which is a open source um, AR device uh, that was contributed by a um, community member. We also added a uh, um, hmm, ex not, not an experimental, but an experiment uh, a driver for experimentation uh, for Arduino devices. Uh, I will talk a little bit more about that. Uh, we also have support for the David controller, the OSVR HDK, uh, the Vive and the Index. Um, and we can also support a whole bunch of 
all uh, all the devices that um, through the OpenHMD uh, interface. Um, so the Arduino device driver is what I would call not a consumer driver. Um, it's not meant for you know use. So it's more of a template that you can learn about Monado dri drivers uh, and that you can experiment. So uh, with this, you're actually getting the source code for the device itself. <laughs> uh, and you can sort of uh, change and twiddle around and play around with it um, and provide a, a nice little experimental uh, playground for you. Uh, so the current only supported Arduino device is the Nano 33BLE. Um, but we're you know, probably going to expand uh, as we get more of them that we can play around with uh, and different ways to, lead, uh, to use it. So code. Um, you can see there's a couple of crossed over uh, numbers here. Uh, and these are from uh, beginning of February at FOSDEM. Uh, so these are sort of uh, the changes uh, as you well as you can see. Uh, we have gained uh, a total of 9,000 lines of code. Um, but as you can see, the, dri the amount of driver uh, lines of code has actually uh, uh, been reduced. Um, but we have actually gained three more new drivers. Um, uh, and this is, due, um, you can see, sort of ask you, hey, how, would, how do you add more drivers uh, and then reduce the number of lines of code. And, and we have done some refactoring and pulling out of the common po code uh, patterns. And that was, uh, you know, we were seeing the same dri the drivers over and over again and turn them into common code. Yeah. Uh, you can see uh, we also extracted away some uh, code from the compositor uh, into more a common place, um, but we, foresee that the compositor will grow soon. Uh, and as you can see, the auxiliary code releases or all of the helper functions has then grown. Uh, same with the state trackers. Um, uh, and the targets are basically a whole bunch of glue code that binds everything together into a um, single binary. Uh, so this is, Kind of a little bit of a roadmap, uh, but also not really. But just what we uh, at Collabra are planning for. Uh, so, uh, you know, it, this is not the entire community, what they are planning to do. Um, so we want to finish up the OpenXR support, make it complete, improve the PS move tracking and actually add a positional PSVR tracking. Um, and then follow up on that, we will start working on Lighthouse tracking. And Lighthouse is for um, the Vive and index and also you know some other devices that are out there and then we will also to move the compositor out of process as i mentioned before even further out we have to think on um, sort of a user's experience things and building a safe space, uh, and with safe space, I mean something that is really, really small and that can run in the background and then say your application crashes, things just don't turn black and you sort of like ha end up in a, a safe space. We need a system UI. So for those who have used say Steam VR, you press a button, you know, press your home button and you end up in a you know, system or, or in this case, you know, it's the Steam theme interface. So that would be something that we would need. We will also need to add um, a set of UI um, to make it more user friendly. Uh, right now, it's a, a little bit, uh, you know, programmer, <laughs> yeah, a, pro a real low level programmer experience uh, to get it up and running. So this is something we also want to work on uh, and all work on uh, AR and SLAM, which is probably something that's going to be a lot of work down the line. Um, so now I'm going to be showing off some demos. Uh, I'm going to start with a uh, simple tracking demo showing off the PS Move tracking. 
so now we have Jacob live. I will just shift over to his screen. So the scene is yours. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, that was my OBS setup that I had forgot to verify a bit. Um, so I will take it off from the live demo of the tracking system. Uh, I thought, uh, let me, uh, well, actually, I wasn't exactly ready. Let's see, please work. There we go. Uh, there we go. Uh, what I'm showing now is uh, the small Hello XR application uh, that's um, sort of a part of the uh, OpenXR SDK. So it's very simple. Uh, and it's just to show off uh, um, you know, a simple OpenXR application. Um, currently, I don't have a headset connected. Uh, so it's using a sort of a dummy device. Um, you can see there's a stereo view. Uh, and then there's a small uh, couple of things that move around here. Um, and this is, um, I don't know if, if my camera up is uh, me shown or is just my screen share that's actually shown. I... So it's only your screen share. Do you want to get on screen and I can uh, look into how to make you visible? And uh, now you're sliding onto the screen. Now you're <laughs> visible. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll do that then. Um, yes. Uh, so uh, this is tracking a PlayStation Move controller. Uh, I'm going to hold it up to my face here, a, uh, and I can move it around uh, like this. Um, and what this is tracking is actually uh, using a small stereo camera. Um, yeah, and we can sort of detect the the ball on this uh, and track it in space. Uh, I can actually uh, now I'm going to hold this still, and I'm going to move around uh, the camera instead. Uh, actually, I can get it. In. A view. Oh no! Uh, the thing frees up. <laughs> uh, okay, that was a bad idea. <laughs> Are you still there? Or am I still on? I guess not. <laughs> so the demo is gone, but we still see you and your okay, desktop. Good. Yep. Good. Uh, I'm gonna start it up again. Uh, and now I'm going to show off uh, the, the debug UI, uh, which has a lot, a lot of things going on here. Um, oh, okay, I'll do. Um, so uh, you, know, you just see, there's a whole bunch of numbers flying around <laughs> and things going on. Um, the most important thing uh, uh, I want to show off is that we can do like a live tracking of the uh, composter latency, or you know. The uh, frame timing. Um, you can see it's the the window is running on the desktop sync, so it's only 60 FPS, and uh, it's usually a lot more stable than this. Uh, so it's probably the recording that's actually making everything a bit laggy here and there. Uh, but we can clearly see it's mostly stable, and then sometimes, yeah, there we go, uh, it shakes up. Um, over here we have uh, on the left side we have um the various parts of the tracking um system uh so we have the uh, sort of the camera device uh, and the latency between um the first pixel being sent to the computer and the actual buffer being completely sent over usb uh so you can that's about uh 20 and 16 uh, milliseconds latency it's just that from it just takes to send the picture from the camera to the computer um for down here we have a um hsv filter which is a hue saturate value uh, filter which um, singles out a certain color or certain spectrum of colors to that we are only interested in um so to demonstrate that we can scroll a bit down make this bigger and we can see the input from the camera. So, the A. Uh, and you can see it uh, has a very low exposure. Uh, so, you know, that's not really much of me there. I can actually do, oh, do I want to do that? Yes. Uh, increase the exposure, and then you see me. <laughs> and I can debug that. Um, and I can go it down. Drag it down because the camera is really only really interested in. We're only really, really interested in the actual ball on the um, this device here, and you can see below here that we have 
this is the AC3 filter uh, input and afterwards, so we're all the interested in color red. So everything else is just you know, not removed. And this is what's being sent into the actual tracking device or tracking code. Uh, oh, I did the wrong thing. <laughs> and this is the tracker. And you might not be able to see it, uh, but there's a slight round circle around it, and that's where the tracker is detecting the circle. So we are basically only tracking a sphere. Uh, and that's and that's how we do that. Um, some cool other stuff we can do. We can also talk to the, uh, the see what the device the this device the state of the device driver as well. Uh, so we can see here all the raw values that we get from the IMU. Uh, you see me if I shake it around, the Excel monitor goes crazy. Uh, um, but we can also control it. So um, let's see if that actually can be here. Ah, never mind. Um, let's see, but I can control the color of the LED uh, that's on top of it. Then you can also see here as I change the colors to be you know purple, it goes away in the filter. Uh, but if I open the purple filter and I turn purple, it shows up. Uh, so this means we can also tweak the values um, specifically. So say we have this purple and you know it's not really tracking that well, we can tweak it to become perfect. Um, same with red. And all that stuff. Uh, so yeah, so this UI allows us to really debug uh, live, which is really good because then you can sort of uh, see connection between oh hey tracking is going bad when I move it away uh, and and things like that. So uh, and we want to build on this so it becomes even more uh, better for people to use. And this is a link to a video um, that. <laughs> in case of uh, breakage and some stuff that you can also watch if you only have the slides. So I think that hopefully works in the exported version as well. Uh, to wrap up a bit, uh, a little bit of rants, <laughs> which is um, uh, always a good thing to have. So uh, me debugging uh, or working with uh, VR uh, and plugging in a whole lot of um, uh, um, had headsets and things like that. Um, it really uh, Gnome Shell has a, a very bad at handling hot plug, especially with non-desktop devices. Uh, it doesn't ignore them and move my, my windows around, which is really super annoying. Um, Intel is missing some uh, OpenGL extensions to make it work on Monado. Uh, we need this extension for that. So that's sort of a name and shame. Uh, some thoughts. Um, there's lots of work ahead of us. Uh, doing VR uh, is actually really, really hard. Um, or AR even. Um, it's especially all of the tracking, which is really hard to figure out. Uh, it's also, it's actually fairly easy to figure out how to talk to a headset. Um, but uh, say the distortion and the tracking part of it, actually, you know, sitting down and understanding the math and doing um, all that is really a lot of work and fairly, you know, complex. Um, some other things that we also thinking about is how do we do uh, user face, user space, or user fa inter facing um, interfaces. Do we do something of our own, or do we provide a library that GNOME and KDE uh, projects can interface to, and you know, uh, setting UI, or do GNOME and KDE do their own system UIs for VR, and how do we you know switch between apps? Is that something that GNOME and KDE will take care of? Um, but one of the most important things, I think, uh, of all of this is we want to build a community uh, for open source XR. Mm, you know, not just for driver, um, for driver writers or people do, working with tra uh, tracking or 
you know, uh, all, the, all the other stuff, like to deep down in, deep dive into, you know, the integrity things. There's also a whole bunch of stuff that actually goes on top of that work. Um, how, how do we talk to, how do we build a community for people doing experiences, programmers? Um, we want, uh, at least we, uh, we and Collabra wants, the future of XR to be open source. Uh, and we want open source to become of everybody's life. Uh, and to toot our own horn, uh, we are hoping to hold, uh, we held a FOSS XR conference last year, and we're hoping to hold uh, another one this year. We'll see with all the things that going on, goes on. Um, yeah, uh, maybe it's an online event. Um, but we had it in the end of the year, so we hopefully most of these things will have blown over here. Uh, and this slide is just a whole bunch of links. Uh, you can download the slide deck and you know click them and um, for what. Uh, something I want to really highlight is that we have internships uh, available at Collabra um, for students uh, that I really recommend you guys checking out if you're interested in XR or you know, VR, AR and other things. Uh, those are some really interesting projects. And there's also, we, yeah. Uh, so also uh, don't be at all scared to, you know, send me on Twitter or message on Twitter or uh, send me an email or whatever, contact me in some way on the, the various social media, um, you know, especially about XR, AR, uh, how we, you know, FOSS XR, the, both the conference and in general, uh, and, you know, how a whole bunch of other um, interesting um, areas <laughs> that I'm interested in that, you, that I would love to talk about. Uh, so don't be afraid at all uh, to talk to me about any of this or just about anything else. So um, uh, thank you very much. And um, questions uh, to follow online I don't really, I don't know the specifics, but I'm sure that Johan has told everybody how to ask me questions uh, now directly on at Fossen. Uh, yeah. And especially thanks uh, for Johan to, um, for hosting this event, even though, um, you know, well, all of the things going on with the pandemic. Um, so uh, thank you, Johan, and uh, thank you everybody for listening. We have two questions. Um, the the first one is how well integrated is this in the open source game engines such as Godot, and and that's follow up by, by also is there anything else? I'm not sure if you, if SDL even knows what AR VR is. Um, so let's see. Uh, let's start with the Godot question. Uh, I know of the the Go developers working on a open XR VR backend. Uh, for Godot, uh, I don't have. I don't know if it's landed yet, <laughs> or if it's uh, just being worked on. Um, but yeah, I remember seeing like a week ago a uh, a branch slash merge request about integrating OpenXL support. So uh, this will make uh, Godot, yeah, work on this. Um, there's support for OpenXL in Unreal, uh, but they don't have it um, supported on. Uh, Linux yet. Uh, I remember hearing somebody working on that, hopefully. Um, uh, working on it, and so hopefully it should be in Unreal as well. Um, and it has also landed uh, in OpenXL support, has also landed in Blender, so we can use that, uh, that directly there. Um, yeah, so uh, for that, um, for SDL, no, the, hmm. Uh, in some sense, OpenXR is a lot what Open what, what SDL is as well. Uh, not really, maybe window management and all the stuff, but as, uh, OpenXR takes care of um, input uh, and access to the devices that way, and uh, it's also platform independent. So, um, or well, you're supposed if you write to just like you, you write an application to SDL, uh, you also um, you write it to OpenXR, and then you can uh, deploy on multiple platforms. Um, yep. Cool. 
Thank you. And the, the second question is from YouTube. So how is the computer detecting the PlayStation Move controllers? Um, so, OK, let's. Uh, <laughs> so as you probably saw in the demos, uh, it, it just detects the actual um, ping pong ball that's on top of it. Uh, so that this thing lights up in a color. And then I, as I showed you, just take the, um, uh, you know, it rooks that color and uh, looks for basically everything, all spheres on the screen um, of that color and hopes it finds the right one, uh, which most of the time it is because that's basically the only thing that's actually bright enough and also circular enough. Um, the device itself is just a regular Bluetooth device, so you have to pair it with the computer. Uh, just like you would pair a you know PlayStation controller and the like that. Uh, there's a special program for that, but we're hoping to actually make it um, integrate that into the Blues uh, component because that has a um, so you have to actually connect it to the computer via USB. Um, but but yeah, we're hoping to just make that so you would just plug it in with a USB connector and. Blues would actually pop up like uh, a window saying, "Hey, do you want to pair this?" And you press yes or no, and it will like automatically pair it for you. So yeah, we're hoping to um, make that easier um, because now you have to run a special command from the uh, command line, which probably isn't uh, that nice. Uh, so yeah, I think that's hopefully how. <laughs> um, ask your questions uh, to dig further into it if you want to. Um, I. We are using OpenCV uh, for basically most of our tracking. Uh, so uh, we started out with our HSV example and then blob tracking there. Um, but we uh, wrote our own HSV uh, filter, uh, but we are using the blob tracking from OpenCV. So if you basically search uh, uh, OpenCV blob tracking, uh, you will find very simple, uh, you know, fairly good examples on how to do this on your computer. Um, and then we sort of integrated all of that together yeah, and or you know, integrating the IMU values and making a whole stack from that. Uh, yep, so I think that answered that. Nice, thank you. And I think that was the last question. So thanks okay. a lot for uh, for your show and especially the live demo at the end. <laughs> that <laughs> no was a bit of a scramble. Uh, yep. Thank you very much. And, thank you. Uh, Enjoy your day. Thanks. And with that, I would like to thank our speakers, our sponsors, and all our viewers.